and we are currently joined by Stephen Jones, COO of the Dallas Cowboys. Stephen, how you doing today, man? Oh, we're getting through the day. Obviously, very disappointing uh, with what went down yesterday, and uh, you know, expected us to you know play a lot better than we did, and uh, especially with what was on the line. And uh, you know, it's just uh, unfortunately, it's uh, been kind of the narrative for our season this year, and we just uh, unfortunately hadn't been able to get over the hump to do what we need to do. Stephen, is there a is there a feeling of hope, or is there a feeling of what's wrong? Well, I think a little of both. I mean, I, I think we do feel like, uh, you know, we're certainly going to get ready this week and uh, give it everything we got to go out and do what we need to do against the Redskins. And then, you know, for the first time this year, we don't control our destiny. So we're going to have to count on the Giants to go out and play well and uh, and hopefully uh, upset the Eagles. But, uh, you know, it's uh, you, you do feel a little bit of that uh, – you know, why Why aren't we not executing better and why are we not making the plays when we need to make them? I mean, we're, you know, we feel like we, we've got good players on this team, but for whatever the reason, we just, uh, you know, we can't get in a rhythm and a cadence on the offensive side of the ball. And, uh, you know, we've, you know, we seem to pick up yards at, at times, but at times when we need it, we don't uh, seem to make the plays to uh, uh, put us in a position to win football games, especially close ones. Steven, did you feel like during the week that the game plan got compromised because Dak was not practicing with the first unit? Is that something that you could kind of point to that maybe they didn't get going in the, the first couple of drives? It looked like the defense steadied itself, but you kind of wasted some possessions there. With, with, was Dak's inactivity during the week a, a factor in, in how the game plan came out early? I don't think so. No, uh, I, I think we uh, we knew they were going to be up there and uh, you know pushing to stop the run. I mean that's a really you know at the end of the day what most teams know is a good recipe for us is to you know have success running the ball. Then it opens everything up and you know with them having the situation they had there in the secondary, we knew we were going to have some opportunities uh, to take advantage of uh, of their defensive backfield, especially as the game progressed and. You know, they continued to have injuries there in the back end. Uh, you know, felt like, you know, we should have some opportunities. And they were, you know, certainly committed to, you know, loading up the box and uh, making it difficult for us to run, especially there on first and, and second down. So, uh, you know, we just didn't take advantage of it. Uh, you know, it's not for me to, uh, you know, say, you know, how much, you know, it affected Dak in terms of, uh, you know, that's a better question for him. But sure. you know, I know he felt good about the game plan, and I know he felt good that he could go out there and be successful. And, you know, we've seen people do it. And, you know, he, you know, if you take his drops uh, that he had that, uh, you know, were not really like our receiving core, you know, Dak still uh, threw the ball well. I know he missed a few key ones, but, uh, you know, most quarterbacks during the course of a game are going to miss, right. you know, going to miss some passes. So, you know, everybody wants to, you know, isolate on Dak. I, I think Dak, you know, really, uh, you know, did a lot of good things. And, uh, you know, we've just got to, you know, we just, this year we hadn't done the, th we have not done the thing that we need to do uh, to win close football games. And we've just got to continue to go to work. As, as you said, there's a little bit of, you know, we've got to get better. At the same time, there's sure. certainly hope. We think we can go out and beat the Redskins. And we certainly, uh, you know, think the Giants can step up and uh, you know in New York there and uh, and beat the Eagles. So we're going to work this week, and you know, get, you know, hopefully something good happens for us. Stephen, you were talking about uh, those things with Dak, and you know, some of the, the the places where some things have failed. Now, I wonder, do you feel like you've gotten a fair look at a potentially thirty-five million dollar quarterback? Yeah, I mean, we have all the confidence in the world in Dak. We've never blinked on that, and. You know, we've had a very aggressive offer out there every step of the way, and we certainly understood that if he even, you know, if he, he stepped it up, which, you know, I, I think Dak has given us uh, every opportunity to have success this year. I'm, I'm as bullish about Dak as I've ever been. Steven, at the, at the end of the game, the, the big discussion in, in really in the radio world today is and around the country is about – why wasn't Amari Cooper on the field in that fourth down situation? And can you walk us through? I know you really pay close attention to players going off and on the field. You study this stuff. You're part of meetings and things. What kind of explanation did you get 
on why Amari was not on the field for that uh, crucial fourth down situation? Well, to be candid with you, we're about to walk into our uh, personnel meeting okay. in about an hour. And okay. uh, as you know, the team had a late uh, late arrival last night. Yes, sir. Because of plane difficulty, so they've set that meeting back. Normally we would have had that meeting, but uh, we're going to have that at one thirty. And, you know, I think last night wasn't the right time to be talking, uh, you know, detailed questions. It sure. was obviously a very disappointed locker room and, uh, you know, everybody, uh, you know, has thoughts and, you know, obviously there's frustration and disappointment and uh, certainly uh, we'll take a deep breath here today and we'll sit in these meetings and, you know, go through uh, the thoughts and why certain things were why they were. Obviously, uh, you know, everybody could see that uh, both Amari and Cobb, who Cobb had been having a, you know, a good run up yes, and down sir. the field there in the second half and he was sitting over there with him. But, right. uh, you know, at the end of the day, I have a lot of confidence in, and Kellen that, uh, you know, he had a play in mind that, uh, you know, was going to isolate uh, Gallup there, and he'd been making some big plays for us on his corner. And, uh, you know, felt like that was the best opportunity right there to get us a score. And so, uh, uh, but I'm sure we'll get more detail from that. But, uh, you know, that's what I can give you at this point. Has there been a has there been a, a a moment this season or after seeing you know some things where where Cooper kind of disappears? Have you had any questions about about what his play is capable of? And obviously with his contract kind of in that in that way too. Well, you know, anytime you have a team, uh, you know, and Dre and I were talking about this just last night between the two of us. You know, we have a lot of options out there between uh, you know between Zeke, between Dak, you know, yeah. being able to be an RPO threat running the ball. Uh, you got a Tony Pollard who's shown that he, he can be so explosive and then a receiving core uh, that if you go with the starting group of, of Cooper and Gallup and uh, Cobb and then you throw in a Tavon, you know, there's a lot of options. So at times, uh, you know, you, you would like to hope that that works to your advantage that you take what they give you. And, uh, you know, if they're going to stack up on Zeke, then you've got other options at receiver. And if they double down on guys or, you got better matchups that you like that, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, that can happen, but you'd like to hope that uh, when it does, that a, a guy like a, you know, if they're, they're concentrating on a Cooper and he's not getting his uh, targets or touches, then uh, a guy like Gallup steps up and has a huge game or Cobb or uh, Whitten and Jarwin. So, you know, we, we, we've got a lot of options there. Uh, unfortunately, we just hadn't been able to make the plays that we need to make in these close games. You got Stephen Jones joining us here on the KNC Masterpiece on 105.3 The Fan. Now, I know Broadus worked for Parcells during during that time. I was at the DallasCowboys.com website as an intern over there at the time. And I know that he never let anybody feel comfortable. Like, it was always kind of this re- real weird feeling, but he also did things that motivated. And I'm wondering, Stephen, within your building right now, who's the guy that – keeps people uncomfortable in the organization, either either players or even, you know, coaching staff too? Well, I think it, uh, you know, that'll be something we, you know, evaluate at the end of every year. And everybody has different styles of how they have success. And uh, certainly when you're evaluating why you have or you haven't had success, what's that missing ingredient as to why you hadn't. And uh, certainly uh, whether it's, uh, as Brian knows, whether it's, uh, someone who likes confrontation or, right. uh, or or likes to have conflict. And, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, that's a successful way of holding people accountable. At the end of the day, I do believe Jason does hold people accountable and certainly, uh, you know, understands when people are doing their job and doing what's expected of them and certainly understands when uh, people aren't doing their job and are not doing and certainly calls them out. And uh, But there's different styles of going about how you get that accomplished those are all things that we evaluate at the uh, at the end of the season. We're here, you know, at the midnight hour, and uh, we've got to go to work and beat the Redskins, and you know, hope the Giants can uh, can can do something good there and beat the Eagles. So that's what we're focused on right now. We'll certainly get into a lot of those type of things uh, there uh, when our season's over. Uh, for the record, Stephen, I voted for you. By the way, the guy that makes everybody feel uncomfortable. <laughs> There you go. I knew you go. I knew that from <laughs> firsthand. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, to me, Stephen, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question about your defense. You know, this is the first time that we've seen Jason Garrett really go to the podium last night post and talk about a player that didn't play well. And uh, with, with Cheeto, with Awuzie and stuff like that, it, 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 what, what, is, what has gone on with, 
with some of these cornerbacks that you have, you know, we, we've seen them play at a high level. They, they come back. And what, what's what, what if what, you, from your eye, and again, you study this stuff really great, and I appreciate you doing that. But what have you seen from, say, a guy like Cheeto, and, and, and why is he struggling, it's particularly in a game like last night? Well, as you know, uh, Brian, Chris has high expectations on what uh, a cornerback's job is. As, sure. As we all know, one of the great ones we had around here was Deion Sanders. And, uh, you know, he was a, a business decision guy when right. he came to tackling. Right. And, uh, you know, it's a lot. It's not natural for most corners to want to. Uh, to want to be physical, and I'm not saying that in a negative way. It's just uh, where they are. You know, a lot of them, yeah. the way they played co- right. in college, the way they do it, uh, you know, it's not natural to ask these corners to come up and 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 really play in a physical way, especially when it comes to uh, you know being big tacklers. And that's what this scheme requires: is for corners to uh, you know step up and not only play physical in man, but uh, when it's their time to. Uh, come up and make a tackle, then, uh, you know, there's there's expectation there. And as you said, accountability there. And, uh, you know, sometimes if these guys don't exactly get it done uh, the way Chris expects them to get it done, uh, you know, then, as you said, there's going to be confrontation there with Chris right. and his personnel back there. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes, uh, you know, something that's, uh, you know, not natural for these corners, sometimes they can – uh, not be as consistent as they need to be. I think Jadobi's a, a great athlete, and at times, as you well know, he's shown some great physicality. Sure has. And, uh, I think last night there was, uh, you know, a couple plays where we felt like that wasn't uh, uh, totally on display. I think Jason and Chris felt that way, and uh, uh, certainly, uh, you know, they they pulled him uh, for you know periods of time uh, to hold him accountable to what we expect our corners to do when it comes to the running game. Stephen, the uh, you know you got it's not quite the way we wanted it, not uh, not the exact way we wanted, but there is a chance right now. And how how brilliant is it? Uh, the drama of the NFL is going to be coming down to the last minute. The, but the game gets moved to three twenty five, but you're playing at the same time that your opponent uh, or the other team in your division is playing to to clinch this division. Well, that's the greatness of the NFL. And you know we were talking with Jeff Lurie on the field, and uh, obviously this uh, you know. Uh, it's been, I think, six, seven, eight years that uh, there's not been a repeat champion in the NFC East. Certainly, right. we're wanting to change that right here. But uh, you know, this uh, this league right now has gotten to where everybody pays their players a lot of money. Uh, they pay them the same amount because there's a salary cap, and most teams do spend to the cap. Uh, they do well. They have great coaching staffs. They have great scouting staffs, and that's why you see, uh, you know, Seattle who's in position to really. Uh, run the table and uh, have a buy, and then uh, a team like Arizona steps up and beats them. Uh, in addition to getting their quarterback hurt, you, you know, you scratch your head and say, "How does something like that happen?" Uh, you know, it's just uh, this league is is very difficult, and uh, there's no such thing as a, uh, you know, uh, as playing games where you can just roll the ball out there and think you can show up and and win a football game. I know at times teams get on runs, but uh, you know, this is. Uh, NFL's hard, and uh, it's hard to win football games. You got to play your very best every time you uh, walk out on that football field. And uh, certainly, uh, uh, we weren't at our best yesterday, and we paid a price. And uh, hopefully, we'll get that back in order against the Redskins, and on a positive note, and then hopefully get some help. All right, Stephen, we really appreciate your time. Uh, I know you got a big meeting to get to, and uh, let's go figure out what uh, what all went down, man. Okay, thanks, guys. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas to you.